I am so thrilled to welcome Michael Rantisi to my kitchen. <laughs> so Michael. I grew up in Tel Aviv for a Greek Orthodox family and you get exposed to so much, especially all that amazing street food mm. and falafel is one of them. Like surprisingly, I never actually cooked falafel till I came to Australia. It's crazy. <laughs> because I, I never had the need for it. Why yeah. would you actually cook a falafel when you live in a place where there is just so much magical falafel? When I was about eight, I went to Israel for the first time and had my first falafel and I still remember biting through that soft pita, landing on those hot, crunchy falafel balls, all the salad, the sauce, it was so memorable. Mm. And then went back on my honeymoon years later and Danny's Israeli uncle took us to his favourite place. And then I was a bit older, I understood the nuances of the cabbage and the pickles and the tahina. It's such a thing and you've brought that to Sydney through Kepa Street Kitchen. Kepa Street Kitchen started from an inspiration of cooking at home. So, you know, as a chef, you train French and Italian cuisine and that's all you do all your life. And when you have guests over for dinner, you want to cook food that you believe in. That's what made it a bit more exciting to try to create one that is kind of a Sydney falafel, but still with a heritage and a background to kind of where I come from. Which is why I'm so excited that Michael is going to share that recipe with us today. We are going to make Kepa Street Kitchen's Tel Aviv falafel. I'm going to make the pita. Michael's going to do all the rest. So I'm just going to mix the salt and the flour. Make a little well in here. Yeast and sugar, and a little bit of water. Mix it all together. All right, let's put the rest in. Perfect. And I'm just gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes just to make sure the yeast is active. So it's been 10 minutes and it's lovely and foamy. So I'm just gonna bring the flour in. So this is a coming together. It's a really shaggy dough now, and I'm just going to tip it. See, I need him here all the time. This is brilliant. Look how well you do that. This is an art to, to see Michael knead like this. It's just mesmerizing to watch and I think this is going to be the best batch ever. So we're kneading it till it becomes a smooth springy dough. Is that how you describe it? I would say yeah. so. Okay, so now we need to just divide this into 12. And I just roll it into a small circle. They're really tiny, the ones that I'm making, much smaller than a regular pita. So I'm flouring the tea towel and then we're just gonna lay them out like this. So I'm just gonna sprinkle these with a bit of flour and cover them with another tea towel and let them rise for about an hour, give or take. I can't wait for them to be baked. Also, mm. also I can already taste them. Deliciousness. Okay, now you've really gotta concentrate because Michael, king of falafel in Sydney, is going to make his falafel in this kitchen. What I love with falafel is that it has so much debate, doesn't it? Everybody does it so differently. So what I love doing is soaking the chickpeas and the fava the night before. And onion is a beautiful ingredient that has so much sugar. So the caramelization and the crispness of the falafel from outside is actually phenomenal. Garlic, obviously. And I love adding chili into my falafel because it has this back hint of nice spice to it. A lot of fresh parsley. We're really learning all the secrets here. How beautiful is this coriander? It's fantastic. Oh, the smell of that is so fresh and fragrant. Oh, it's wait unbelievable. Wait till they fry. The whole will just be... I just cannot wait. You need to be able to hold it together. You can see it's still not holding the shape together. So it requires a little bit more. My okay. oh God, now the mix looks fantastic, Lisa. Thank you. It was all my doing. It definitely was yeah. all you're doing. Now we want to do our seasoning. I love adding sesame seeds because they have a little kind of like jeweled on the falafel. This is cumin and coriander powder. Yeah. And all we're missing is the salt, Lisa. And can you see how beautiful and green and lush and it's holding its shape together? Mm. Let's put it aside. So tell me what you're going to put in your perfect falafel wrap. I love falafel, trina and cabbage. I love the whole kind of creamy, acidity, crunch texture for my ideal 
falafel pita. Okay, so let's do the pickled cabbage. Over here is just water, vinegar, and a little bit of sugar. I like adding the salt in my cabbage. And what I actually do, I get the liquid out of it a little bit. Just pour it over. Beautiful. How long do you leave this for now? I would leave it till it cools down. You can eat it the same day, but I love the fermentation after three, four days. Okay, so you just need to hang around for three days till it's ready. No, no. jokes. Joking, joking, because we've got I've one. Already we made prepared. another one. Of course we do. Of course we do. But I need to taste it. Go for I? it. It's actually really crunchy, juicy at the same time. Mm -hmm. Hint of vinegar, mm -hmm. salted perfectly. I love it. It's good. Thank you. It's going to go really well in the falafel. Excellent. Okay, so let's talk the tahina sauce or the tahini. Tahini is a very interesting ingredient and using a good quality one, obviously. So I'll leave you with all the mixing. So you will be doing all the hard work this time. I'm adding fresh garlic into it. A whole lemon. I like it very acidic. Now we're going to add really cold water. Salt, obviously. And now you just have to be very careful not adding too much liquid and being okay, able to control it. So I don't want it too runny. I wanted a texture yeah. of kind of like a dip. When you put it in the fridge, it will go a little bit more solid. Yeah, go for it. Delicious. Mm. Nice, creamy. Lemon, mm. garlic, sesame. It's just so good. And it will work really well because we have all the... <laughs> <laughs> I want to run away with this bowl. Mm. It's really good. It's delicious. Mm. It's nice so and creamy delicious. and easy. Yeah. So these have puffed up beautifully. So soft and puffy. And I'm just gonna put them straight into my hot oven and the hot tray. Puffed up beautifully, tiny bit golden on the bottom. Soft, fresh and hot. Mm, so good most exciting part of the day. We are frying the falafel now. I can't wait, Michael. So I use this beautiful falafel spoon. You can buy them online. We're frying enough falafels for the two of us. Yeah, so yeah. what do we need, like five each? Probably 10. Each? Probably. <laughs> just to be greedy on the greedy <laughs> yeah. side. They just look so pretty. Unbelievable. Thank you. Oh, how good. Look how green that is inside. It's unbelievable. Mm. Hell, that's delicious. Unreal. The crust he's got on this is extraordinary. So thin and crisp. Sesame really adds something to it. And inside is so green and fluffy and fresh. Mm. This is like my dream come true. You are in my kitchen having just fried the falafels and now you're going to make me a falafel wrap. So mine, what I love is a lot of that inside. Yep. Generous One sauce. falafel squashing it all in. Yep. I love adding a bit of fresh tomato as well. Yep. Just some salt because I can. <laughs> Cabbage. And more sauce. I love that. All right, here we go. Mm. I absolutely love that. The bread's lovely and soft, the pita, it's soft. And then you've got that hot, crisp thing inside with all that flavor. It's so good, and this tomato, which is sweet, and the cabbage, which is just adds that tanginess and the acidity. It's very good, and the sauce. Just want to bathe in that sauce. Cheers to Cheers falafel. to falafel. Mm. It's so messy, isn't it? Actually, it is really good. It's good, isn't it? Mm. So this is our Tel Aviv style falafel wrap and it is so bloody good. It has been such a pleasure to have you in my kitchen. Thank you for having me. Till next time. Look forward. You'll find all the recipes and links to the fabulous locations in the notes under the video. Remember, check out the whole channel and don't forget to like and subscribe as I walk across Greater Sydney in search of the most delicious food. And thank you for walking up an appetite with me today. And remember, there's got to be joy in the journey and deliciousness in the destination.